So I get invited. I sign up for it because it was like the good thing to do. Okay. Even though I was so depressed, there's nothing I would want to do, but uh, nothing like that I would want to do. But like 20 guys signed up. I'm like, all right, I'll join. So I go, <clears throat> only two of us show up, literally two guys. Two guys, we get on this bus. It's a big bus. There's only two of us there. Long story short, we show up to this prison full of women. It's like 300, 400 women. And I'm full of anxiety, full of depression, such an insecurity. And he asked me, hey, do you want to start off by saying something? You want to speak to them first? And I'm like, there's no way I want to do that. It's the last thing I want to do. I said yes. So then I'm sitting there like, I need to do notes or something. I'd never yeah, spoken to a lot of people. Hang on. You said yes. Most people would say no in that moment. Yeah. Is that your no quit mentality that kicked in or? I wasn't, that was before that was even started. I think it was, uh, to me, it was really just Lord. I do not want to do this, but I'm going to do it because by how all this has taken place, there's literally two of us. I have to speak. Okay, <laughs> so, right, go ahead. I was just curious. Yeah. If I say no, I, I have the option to say no, but it would really just be a cowardly thing to do with two guys. So I'm like, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to do it. So I say, yes. I have no notes. I have no preparation. I've never spoken to a big crowd in my life. And next thing you know, I'm standing in front of 300, 400 women. He calls me up. And I remember my prayer to the Lord in silence was, Lord, I have nothing to say. And I was like, I need you to speak through me. I need you to do something. So I get up there. And to this day, I can't tell you what I said, but it was the first time in months where I felt him be the lifter of my head. And I felt my chest come out a little bit and I felt my confidence. And it was that piece that surpasses all understanding that I started speaking with confidence, with surety, with, with certainty, with quoting scripture that the Holy Spirit would bring to mind that I'd read and kind of forgotten. And, and women are crying and, and it was just this beautiful moment. And I'm telling you, I don't know what I was saying. I think I was talking about my mom and it wasn't like an out of body experience, but it was definitely like in that moment, I knew the Lord was speaking through me and, and I'm hugging this lady at the end, you know, she's bawling. And to this day, that woman got saved. She'll message me on Facebook every once in a while, like her, she got married and she's out of prison. And, and so just so much glory from that moment. And that was kind of a starting block for me of, wow, this is, this is what being on fire for the Lord looks like. And, and so from that point, it was men's group. I'm up at 6 a.m. A random guy invited me. I'm at a men's group. I knew, knew I knew no scripture. Everyone's naming their best, their favorite scripture. And I'm sweating because I don't have one. And But I'm just getting poured into by all these guys and my church and my college ministry. And one thing after another, man, the Lord just placed so much in my life. But there was that starting block of just a simple yes. Well, you could and you could have you could have succumbed to a no. Right. And I think that too often that happens. I think we do need to say yes as men. It's not about how we feel. It's not whether we feel capable or not. There's these moments that come that are pivotal moments. And you can't tell that they're pivotal in the moment that they're happening. But they are pivotal moments. And we need to be leaning into the Lord in His strength, trusting Him to work through us to do these things. Because that right there, that act of service is what I would call that. You you said yes to an act of service, which is about other people and not about yourself. And that triggered a reliance on the Lord because you felt completely incapable. And that further triggered a faith that God is the, all the strength that you need. I'm just right. kind of reading into it, but that's what I see right there. And I think so many times as men, you know, every, all our decisions, our life is an accumulation in large part of the decisions we make. And if if we make weak decisions, even on the small ones, those who accumulate and they're taking us down an inferior path to the very best path that God probably has for us and for our families. And so I, I, I hope people listening will really think about that and go, wow, I, how do you I apply that to myself? OK, when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling discouraged and out, maybe I need to go do something for someone and do something that's outside of my own strength. See, God shows up at the end of our own strength and we need to get to those places more often because we experience God in a meaningful way. And that grows our faith. It grows our you know relationship with God and reliance on God.